Okay, so um, a lot of the people I coach have names for their, their first cars. So um, we had recently, we've got, a, uh, we've got a little Nissan Micra called Cassandra. We have a Honda Jazz called Jolene, uh, clearly a, a Dolly fan. Um, we've got a little Polo called Ralph, think about it. Um, and we've got another Polo um, called Minty. So um, I thought it'd be nice to introduce uh, my first, first car to you and um, the name I've got for it. This isn't actually my first car, um, but it was bought to recapture. It's very similar to my first car, so it was bought to recapture that really real special feeling you get from your, your first car. So um, this, is, this is Mr. Rusty. Um, so now you're acquainted. And I know the conclusion you're all jumping to. You're looking at the age of the car. Um, but uh, I can assure you that when this car had its MOT a month or so back and went up on the ramp, um, the MOT inspector was in fact so impressed with the quantity of wax oil rust proofing that had been applied to the underside of the car, he found a need to uh, write it down on the pass certificate. So um, that's not the reason um, Mr. Rusty is so named. Uh, Mr. Rusty is in fact named after a character in a 1960s uh, television, uh, children's television program called the Magic Roundabout. And Mr. Rusty was the man who looked after the roundabout. Um, and so clearly was a chap who knew a thing or two about roundabouts, um, which is quite handy because this video is all about roundabouts. So um, not so much Mr. Rusty and the Magic Roundabout as Mr. Rusty and the Millbrook Roundabout in Southampton. Um, the other great thing about Mr. Rusty is probably like most of the cars you'll be driving, um, he has a manual handbrake um, and gear selector, so there are no electronic toys to help us with the drive. So hopefully we'll be able to give you a, a realistic perspective of what you would experience when driving. So first thing um, to say, Millbrook Roundabout in Southampton um, has sort of entered into folklore as being a great leveller on driving test day. Um, and so we're going to look to demystify it slightly um, and make it a much more pleasant experience uh, when, when driving it, hopefully. First thing to say, as with any other roundabout, the most important thing to do is uh, to take the time and know where you're going, um, rather than just bundling in and trying to drive it um, and not being entirely clear on where, where it is you're trying to go, um, which rarely ends in, in success. Um, but before, and so normally you, you do that by uh, getting your approach speed right and giving yourself time to read all the road signs and floor markings. Um, and that's how we would approach any, any roundabout. But before even we get to um, driving it and looking at the road signs, let's just, just pause for a second and go back to first principles and look at the theory of roundabouts. Um, now for conventional roundabouts, um, I'm hoping are able to see that and um, can remember um, for conventional roundabouts as a guiding principle, not a hard and fast rule, but as a, as a guiding principle, um, we use the clock face principle. So whichever lane we're approaching from becomes six o'clock and all other routes are orientated um, from that. And as you may remember for um, exits up to 12 o'clock, um, we are given guidance on which lane to approach in and when to signal, and then similarly, any exits beyond 12 o'clock, there's um, another set of guidance we use for, for those exits beyond 12 o'clock. And if we refer to the Highway Code's guidance on that, so roundabouts are covered from Rule 184 onwards, um, and so they're all 185. You've got a, a diagram there which is similar to the clock face uh, diagram I was just showing you there and explains those elements. Um, and then rule 186 um, is quite interesting because that covers signalling and positioning when we're approaching um, and using, using roundabouts. And it breaks it down into left turns, right turns and any intermediate exits. Um, so have a read of that. But the crucial line in Rule 186 is the, the line that says, unless signs or markings indicate otherwise. So to be clear, these guiding principles relate to conventional roundabouts, 
um, unless signs or road markings indicate otherwise and then we should follow the signs and the road markings and so the key thing to recognize with Millbrook roundabout is that it's not a conventional roundabout so trying to drive it applying conventional clock face principles um, won't work so it's just probably stating the obvious but it's crucially important that you you understand that um, Millbrook roundabout is in fact um, a type of roundabout called a spiral roundabout now the highway code is only sort of the high level principles and so it doesn't give um, um, a, a level of detail on these spiral roundabouts so we then have to refer to the more comprehensive uh, DVSA guide to driving, driving the essential skills, which is a fantastic comprehensive um, driver's manual. If you haven't already got a copy, I'd highly recommend it. So if we refer to that, we see that on page 225, we get an explanation of spiral roundabouts. So uh, just to read that quickly, spiral roundabouts differ from normal roundabouts in that the lanes spiral outwards from the center of the roundabout and each lane has a designated exit. Road markings are used to keep vehicles in the correct lane and to guide them towards the appropriate exit. So that's the clue there. We're using lane markings, not a clock face convention and principle to guide us. And it has three um, points of advice. When you encounter a spiral roundabout, Firstly, make sure you're in the correct lane when approaching and joining the roundabout. That's a crucial point. Having taken in information, make sure you're in the right lane. Second point is to follow the road markings for your lane and the relevant exit. And thirdly, beware of drivers who may wish to join your lane from another lane. And the final point here, which is a good indication on signalling, is that if you need to change lanes, make sure clearly that you check it's safe to do so before doing it, but signal if necessary. And that line is also quite crucial, relating back to Highway Code Rule 186. So um, we should be signalling, once we've entered a lane, it's only necessary to signal um, if we realise we've made a mistake and need to change lanes safely or at the point of exit. So um, that page, page 225 in Essential Skills, gives us some very good guidance on how we should approach um, spiral roundabouts generally. The other thing to note um, with Millbrook specifically is it is a traffic light controlled spiral roundabout, which again has relevance for signaling and our signal timing because on a traffic light controlled roundabout, drivers joining the roundabout won't be basing their decision on whether a gap is there or not um, on the position of our car. They'll be basing their decision on whether to join the roundabout um, based on the traffic light control signals. So again, on other spiral roundabouts which aren't traffic light controlled, signals to indicate we are going around to the right may be beneficial in that situation. On Millbrook roundabout, um, say the drivers aren't looking for a gap in the traffic flow, their gap will be defined and punctuated by the traffic lights. So having just recapped on the theory, we'll now head down to, uh, to Millbrook and just have a look at it and what all that theory means in practice. Have a look at the signage, the road markings, and how we approach Millbrook Roundabout and try and demystify it. Okay, so as you can probably see from the puddles on the floor ahead, um, it started to rain um, and Mr. Rusty doesn't like to come out in the rain uh, for obvious reasons. So we switched to our normal training car uh, for the first section of this video. Um, but don't worry, Mr. Rusty will, will be back later if you're missing him. Um, <clears throat> key thing, uh, just to say, if you are using these videos um, when you're out practicing driver training, just uh, be aware, hopefully this is stating the obvious, but um, it is an offence, certainly for a driver, to attempt uh, to watch a video while, while driving, obviously. Um, it is also an offence for um, a passenger accompanying a learner driver to be using a handheld mobile telephone, tablet, or similar. So uh, attempting to watch these videos while driving um, is not only very dangerous, but is also illegal. So please don't do that. Um, there are plenty of retail car parks conveniently situated all around the Millbrook area. So if you did want to watch the videos, um, little sections of the video before going and attempting the drive, come and park up safely before doing that, please. Um, so now we're just going to set off and 
been using this car, we're going to get some dash cam style footage, which will hopefully give you a clearer view of uh, the route boards and the lane markings. Um, and then for those who are interested, we'll switch to some Mr. Rusty footage um, over the shoulder footage that will give you a better view of what I'm doing um, in terms of head movements for mirror checks, uh, signaling and um, gear selection and timing, those type of things, as well as giving you a view of my attempt at pull push steering techniques. So all the things you'll have been learning in your driver coaching, um, hopefully it will give you a, a bit of a demonstration of what that, that uh, looks like and what you're aiming for. So enough talking. Let's get our head now into uh, driving mode, concentrate on the driving. And we're going to move off and have our first look um, at an approach to uh, Millbrook Roundabout. Three hundred and sixty degree observations before we move the car from the car park. Got the pedestrian there, so we're just holding. Again, scanning all around. We've got a second pedestrian coming through, so we're just going to hold for them as well. Is he doing a bit of surveying work? Keeping and creeping. Our intention is to turn right out of the car park. orientate ourselves we're now approaching from the best reference is the the KFC and McDonald's side of the roundabout so KFC is off to the right hand side you'll begin to see it in a minute first of all we've got this mini roundabout clear behind so I'm not signaling on approach there's now nobody actually to signal for so I'm just going to carry straight on so there's the KFC just to orientate ourselves Nobody behind me, so we can hold back and get a good view of the floor markings, and this is the key thing. So as we can see in this lane, the left hand of the two lanes, we can either go um, first exit to the A35, or second exit to the city centre. We can use the right hand of the two lanes to go to dock gate 20, which is effectively ahead, or to make a right turn towards the, a, oh, sorry, towards the M271. So we're clear on our lane choice. So we'll take um, a simple first exit to the A35. So we're correctly positioned in our lane. Just holding at this point in case anyone wanted to exit that car park to our left. And similarly delaying any signal until we're past that. It is a no entry, but we don't want to cause confusion to other road users. But now, left mirror, left signal following round. So we're going to take the first exit A35, but we could follow around where that red van's going. Those were our two options. New road, new mirrors. Traffic lights are currently green, but potential for the change. We're clear behind and we're on high adhesion tarmac. Okay, so we're just starting our approach to Millbrook roundabout again for a second pass from this direction. So just to orientate ourselves, we've got Kentucky Fried Chicken and McDonald's off to the right. And on our first pass, we took the left-hand lane, which gave us options to take first and second exit. We're now gonna move across, signal move across into the right-hand lane, which gives us options to go to dock gate 20 or on right round to the M271 direction. So I signalled because I was moving my car across a lane, so I was moving from the left lane into this right lane, um, but now I've cancelled the signal having taken the lane, um, because we're just now going to flow round in that lane, and we're not going to signal again until we are ready to exit. So lane lines with the sun on them and the wet, uh, the wet tarmac where it's been raining and they've got the sun on them can be a little bit tricky to see. Okay. 
So three mirror sweeping. Following our lane line round, which feeds us into this center lane. So still not signaling because we're not planning to exit yet. So at this point, we're at the outside edge of the, the roundabout. So we spiraled out from the right hand side to the far left hand side, the outer edge from which we would exit. Now we've got two options here. We could either put a left hand signal on now and take the exit there where um, signed for dock gate 20, but we're not going to do that. So we're not signaling at this point but we could legitimately have taken that exit with a left-hand signal. But we're going to check our mirrors and put a left-hand signal on now for the M271 direction. Checking the cyclists, checking the mirrors, brakes. Cancel the signal now we're into our um, lane. Three room scanning. Checking the crossing is clear before moving forward. And we'll be looking to move out of this lane in a moment because as you can see from the green route board ahead, uh, this lane would take us off to exit onto the, uh, the roundabout for the M271. So we want to move across a lane, so I'm actively checking my right hand mirror, right shoulder before popping a signal on, gently moving across before we get to the um, change in lane markings there, which denote the exit for that lane. So we're now heading in the direction of Totten. Okay, we're starting our approach to Millbrook roundabout. As you can see, there are one, two, three, four exits. We look at the signs just to our right hand side there. M271 direction, so M271 the west, can actually be approached in either this left hand lane or the right hand lane. And so for all the, all the exits up to that, we can approach in this lane, this left-hand lane, and follow around the outside edge of the roundabout. So for each exit, as we drive around now, we'll look at when we would put a signal on if we were going to exit and our lane positioning. So we're three mirror scanning as we move the car forward. So first thing to notice, there is a junction off to the left just before we get to the roundabout. So if we were going to take the first exit, we'd delay our signaling until now. But if we intended to take the first exit, we'd be putting a left-hand signal on now and exiting to the left, marked city centre there. But we're not, we're carrying on round in this outside lane. If we intended to take the next exit, we'd be putting our signal on now, signaling left and exiting just off here to the left. But our intention this time is to carry on round. But our intention is in fact to take this next exit, so I'm checking centre mirror, left mirror, left signal, giving space to the larger vehicle. And exiting M271, M27. But as you can see, any of the first three exits can be approached in that left-hand lane. Now, if you're on an L test, you're not going to be taken onto a motorway section. So you would now need to be looking uh, to move out of this lane, which leads on to the M271. So I'm starting to check my right-hand mirror. Shoulder check, pop the signal on smoothly move into the lane. So as you can see, the, uh, the lane we were in that we just moved out of, as it's signed there, would have been taking us onto the M271. These lanes carry us on towards Totten. Okay, 
Okay, so we're now approaching Millbrook Roundabout. Um, we're coming out from Southampton city centre direction. And as we can start to see from the uh, green route marker board there, we need to be, remain in this uh, left-hand lane to exit. So the van behind is a good long distance behind, so there's no need to confirm that. Our road positioning now makes it clear where we're going. behind so if we just pause on approach here to look at the the route board and take in the options we've got three options one to the immediate left one end to Millbrook Park and the other round to Fairham so if we approach in this middle lane now obviously if we wanted to take the first exit left we would have needed to move across into our left hand lane but for all other route options this middle lane will flow us around and give us the option to exit at all of the other exits as we will now go on to uh, to explore. So we've obviously brought the car to a stop here. We'll be frequently three mirror scanning and doing that before we move the car off. Also being aware of the pedestrian crossing in front of us. So just even as the lights change, just being aware of anyone on a late cross there or any cyclist coming through it is a toucan crossing. Looking ahead now to the roundabout and the floor markings, our lane is clearly marked. So there are three lanes and we're going to remain in the middle of those three and follow the lane lines round on the floor. So three mirror scanning as we take first gear, moving it forward. The next set of lights are red. We follow around, there's the lane markings, so we still remain in this middle lane. Not signalling, because we're in our lane, we're not looking to deviate from that. If we were going to take this next exit, we would be signalling now and exiting into lane two, but we're not, we're following on round. So again, if we were looking to take the next exit, so to go alongside KFC, at this point we would be putting a left hand signal on and then taking that exit. But today we're not going to do that, we're going to continue on round for the A35. So at this moment I'm not signalling because my intention is not to exit or to move lanes. But I am very actively three mirror scanning at this point for anyone else filtering through. The lights changing, three mirror scanning, moving the car forward. Remaining in my lane, so I'm not taking this next exit Hence, I'm not signalling, but I'm now positioned for the A35. So at this point, I do put my signal on to confirm my intention to exit. Three mirror scanning, exiting A35. New road, new mirrors. The pedestrian is a long way back from the crossing. Cancel our signal. Bring the car up to speed. Lights are currently green, but potential for them to change. We do have high adhesion tarmac, brakes. Okay, so we're now approaching Millbrook Roundabout from Totten direction. And there's our first signs for it. signaling once we're clear of the bus only hatched area we can check our mirror and move the car across first sign of the route board now taking in information from the various lane markings And if we, uh, we can just see under the lorry ahead of us that the default left-hand lane allows us either to take the first exit left to Millbrook Park or to go ahead to the A35. And the car ahead had obviously just realized their error, so we'll give them space. I'm three mirror sweeping now. So I'm not signaling at this stage, but if I was turning left first exit, I would be signaling on approach. 
there is that first exit, but we're not taking that one today. We're following on round in the lane for the A35, A35, left mirror, left signal at this point, flowing around in that lane, checking the pedestrian crossing is clear. New road, new mirrors, cancelling the signal once all four wheels are in. So as you can see from a Totten direction, that left-hand lane allows you to take the first two exits. As the signs are now telling us, we're approaching Millbrook roundabout from the Totten direction. So I'm checking my mirrors, left-hand mirror, left signalling and moving the car over. Just checking the cyclist is remaining on the pavement. And then just noting there's a hatched area for buses only, so we mustn't cross through there. But having cleared that, we're checking mirrors, signal, checking nobody else is driving through that hatched area before moving the car into the left hand of the two lanes. And then as you'll see, we get an extreme left lane that emerges to our left, but we're gonna remain in the middle of these three lanes. Just pausing slightly, we're clear behind. This lane allows us to take the eighth 35 or the city centre. The lights are green, no they're not, the lights are now amber so we must stop. Single amber has the same meaning as single red unless you are absolutely at the point of no return, which we weren't there, we were quite capable of stopping. So we're now positioned in the left hand lane which gives us the option for city centre or A35 but if we're taking the A35, we're exiting in lane into lane two of the A35. So the car to our left has the option to take the first exit down past uh, KFC, or also take the A35, but they would exit into lane one, we would exit into lane two. The lorry to our right, not surprisingly, will be going center disc and spiraling out round to dock gate 20. So again, just three mirrors scanning as the lights change before moving. We're not signalling because we're remaining in our lane. I'm just trying to get slightly ahead of the heavy so that we're not in their blind spot. So we're in our lane A35 or city centre. So I'd be signalling now and exiting into lane two if I was going to the A35, but I'm not, so I'm, I haven't signalled on this pass because I'm going ahead now to the city centre, but this is the time when I will put a signal on to confirm my exit. So left mirror, left signal, checking nobody's overshooting the junction. And exiting for the city centre. So the lorry's now going on round. I cancel my signal to avoid confusion with this left hand turn. Gently bringing the speed up. It's a 40 mile an hour speed limit, and we're going to be rejoining the multi lane. Where other cars will be travelling at around 40 miles an hour. And right hand mirror and shoulder checking that nobody was coming across there. Okay, so once again we're approaching um, Millbrook Roundabout from Totten direction. So I'm checking my mirrors, actively checking my mirrors, popping a signal on moving the car from lane two to one. time I'm going to exit directly into lane two of the two lanes. Now, typically from this route you'd be looking to head back towards set test centre, so Millbrook Park, so it'd be a left hand lane approach and then signal on first exit, but we are going to carry on and explore our options in this right hand lane. Three mirror scanning as we move the car forward. Just increasing the separation gap on the uh, container lorry there without holding people up behind. But we can see this is signed for dock gate 20 in this extreme right hand lane. So not signalling, remaining in our lane. 
dock gate 20 we take to the inner disc and it spirals us round following the lane marking which now begins to move us out dock gate 20 you see how we spiral out from the center and it now takes us right round in the direction that lorry's gone right to the outer edge of the disc from which we exit and we would be putting a signal on now to go um, left to um, dock gate 20 but we'll continue on around it's quite acceptable to continue on around and go full circle so back m271 so that's a good illustration of how a spiral roundabout works it spirals you it takes you into the center disc and then gradually spirals you out three mirrors scanning now popping the signal on so our intention is to exit so we've just done a full gone full circle there we came in just where that bus is and we've gone full circle illustration of what a, how a spiral roundabout works. So we're going to the traffic lights, which are currently green, and we can get our first uh, view of Millbrook roundabout, uh, the route board. And we're going to pause at these lights, which will give us a chance to have a good look at that route board. And our intention is to turn right for the M, following signs for the M271, the West Red Bridge and Totten. Three mirrors sweeping. But interestingly, if we look at the lane markings, M271 to the board here, M271 to the West can also be approached in either the, this left hand lane or the right hand lane. So clearly it's a it's a busy roundabout, it's a big roundabout, so they've got two lanes to move a larger volume of traffic. So normal clock face principles would dictate that we would uh, use the right hand lane and take to the centre disc, um, but this spiral type roundabout gives us specific lanes and specific lane markings to follow. The key thing is, to having selected the right lane, which we've done, is to remain within that lane as we go round and round about and not cross lanes. That's the key danger point. So, bring the car to a stop. It's quite handy that we've got this pause. actually be going around this roundabout rather than close to the centre disc which would be normal convention for turning right we're actually going to be taking the outer edge the outside edge of this roundabout and following it all the way around the outside there'll be another lane which is effectively the middle lane which will be alongside us and that will also be potentially exiting the 271 and 271 direction and then the, the inner um, lane nearest the centre disc is actually going all the way around to the A35. So checking our mirrors. A little bit ahead of the uh, traffic sequence there. Obviously, there's a number of set of lights here, so wait out of gear until the amber light comes on again. If we were shunted from behind and we're in gear and our foot jumps off the clutch, we then start driving into the, the danger zone. And on a stop start car, which this one isn't, it also gives us some environmental benefits. Three mirror sweeping. So we follow round, keep to this outside lane, as you can see is M271, as is the middle lane. So we're now at the outside edge of the disc and obviously normally you exit roundabouts from the outside edge so we could be exiting here but we're not following round M271 but we are exiting now so left mirror at the left signal Just checking for anyone crossing the lanes mistakenly the black car has come round in the outside of those two lanes new road new mirrors
take the second exit. So we've got the sign for Dock Gate 20, just checking the mirrors, we've got the cyclist crossing. So Dock Gate 20 is our intended course. See from the board here. And ahead would normally be left hand lane. As we can see from the road markings and the board here, Dock Gate 20 is indeed this lane. So we're in the correct lane. But we're not signalling yet because when there is a an exit before the one we want to take so there's a um an immediate left hand exit and so if we were going to take that exit we would be putting a signal on however um there is actually a left hand junction where you can probably just see the van over there at the moment um, so we would delay any left hand signals if we're going to use one until we pass that to avoid any confusion. It is a no entry, as the sign says there, um, but generally it's preferable to reduce any risk of any confusion because other classes of road user might not view the road as, as we do and might not think, oh, yeah, that's a no entry. Um, so in that situation, just delay your signal. But just to confirm, our intention is not to turn first exit left. We're going to go ahead. So that will be the second exit. Frequently scanning for other road users filtering through. So motorcyclists are cyclists. And we're just aware that we've got an L car ahead of us. So does appear to have an instructor um, and a pupil in it so new potentially a new driver so we're going to give them time to move off don't know what level of training they're at at the moment but uh, down at Millbrook they've uh, had quite a bit of training you'd hope Lights are changing, three mirror sweeping as we prepare the car. You can avoid misguided courtesy of um, inviting the other uh, car to pull out and to cause confusion. So, the L car has gone off to the left, first exit, signalling as we described, well timed signalling. We've positioned into this lane, and so we've now just passed the exit before the one we want. So, this is our time to mirror and signal. Holding back on the large vehicle. Yeah, you can prove me the lights are still green, checking to the left, nobody's overshooting that. And we've then got some pedestrians crossing. We can cancel the signal as we're in the new road. exit to dock gate 20. We've then got two stubby lines which are actually um, the on slips and then we have the Millbrook Park exit which is where we're going and then beyond that at about probably a four o'clock clock face reference we have the A35 and Fairham. So if we look at the road markings if we want um, to take the A35, we should be in the right-hand lane. For everything else, we should be positioning in this left-hand lane, um, which then, as we cross through these traffic lights, becomes uh, the centre lane. So hopefully all of that will become clear. But the right 
right lane just for clarity the right hand lane is only if we are going fully right to the A35 Fairham and General Hospital direction three mirror sweeping slightly ahead of myself there now we're three mirror sweeping again important to do that again if you do do your observations early clear at the junction just check in the mirror there is space just to ease myself around so we're looking to make safe progress so that was acceptable as long as I checked my mirrors um, there's no point in sitting waiting um, you shouldn't you, even if the lights are green you shouldn't cross the line if you can't clear the junction safely in that case obviously the back of the lorry was sticking out but having checked my mirrors there was nobody behind so it was quite acceptable to um, to get on with it okay, just be mindful we have got a large articulated lorry as we've seen that will be going round and round about at the same time as us so just be aware of that driver's blind spots and the extra room they will need to get such a large vehicle and an articulated vehicle around that so be very mindful we can now see the driver in their mirror which gives me a degree of confidence this is quite a small car but again you wouldn't want to be putting it and they're turning up but you wouldn't want to be putting your car down the inside of it until you were very sure of the course it was going to take. Left mirror, left signal. Motorcyclist quite legitimately filtering through, so we're looking for when we scan in our mirrors. As we said before, it's fine to cancel your signal if we're waiting for a long period of time so it's not clicking away as a distraction. Um, but before moving the car, you don't want to reapply it. If a cyclist was to come down my inside and they thought I was going straight ahead, and in fact, I'm turning, that's when things can come astray, so that's why signaling is so important. mirror sweep, popping the signal on. Answer the signal. At the right of the back, our intention is to go ahead, checking the mirrors, not signaling on approach, signaling on exit. here for a while we can cancel the signal to avoid it becoming a distraction and irritation to us but it's important that we tell people where we're going so imagine a cyclist coming down our inside so before we move the car when we prepare the car when we get the, the amber light we're going to put the car into gear we'll do a three mirror sweep and then put our signal on we 
you should have plenty of time to do all of that. We're frequently mirror scanning now. So, three mirror sweep. Put that signal on, check down the inside before turning to the left. Short shift into second, looking to the right. You've obviously got the block of the HGV there. And we're going to take this first exit. 30 mile an hour speed limit. Immediately got another roundabout ahead. So checking it's clear to the right. And the left signal on exit with the benefit of the ground opposing and the one behind. New road, new mirrors. 